Body. Thanks a lot for joining us. And we have got Game Week 219 live. I've caught up with the live chat ahead of coming on. Uh, Addy, hey, Mai, and Misaki. Fist bump to you guys. Thanks for joining us. No one can be arsed with Game Week 219. I'm going to do my best to be arsed. Um, so let's just see how we pan on, guys. I'm not expecting it to be too long. As usual with these international breaks, uh, the live chat is definitely much more of a kind of QA activity. So anything interesting goes on there that piques my interest. We'll see what we we'll see what we do. We'll see what we go. As ever with the streams, we will be looking back at the game week we're leaving and seeing what we're coming out with, um, as well as looking to the game week ahead <clears throat> and anything else in between that we can really get our hands on. Um, if you're watching this after we've been live, thank you very much. It does uh, mean the world to me. If you're watching this live as well, thank you very much. At any point, guys, you laugh, you learn, you like something, whatever. Please do smash the thumbs up button, like the video, it goes a long way to support me and. It means the world, you've got no idea. And yeah, it is what it is. Um, international break is a, you know, I've, I've found myself getting like itchy feet with it. You know, like I don't really, like, I like to watch in Scotland or try and catch America as well, depending on kickoff times and whatever. But I do lose interest in international football way more than I ever, ever have in my life before. And I don't know if that's just because I've got, so I've, I've not, I've not got unlimited space in here, you know, like, so a whole other set of manager and formation dynamics and calendars and away fixtures and home fixtures and all that caper. I just don't know if I've quite got that at the moment for all these international qualifiers. When we get to the World Cup, it'll be a bit easier to laser in on some opportunities potentially. Um, but yeah, I digress. So we'll be going through the normal game week stuff and I see anything else that we end up chatting about. Fist bumps to all. So Juia, thanks for joining us, my man. Michael Penick, good to see you as well. Uh, I'm looking for a decent rare forward and mid. Any ideas from the chat? Addy, I might even have a look at that as well. Because I had a message today. Sorry, guys. I still haven't had the haircut. It's an absolute riot. I'm sorry. Um, asking for pretty much the same thing, but a defender. So maybe we'll just do that. A bunch of like priced, you know, they're not going to be cheap guys, but guys that are, you know, underpriced, maybe. Let's see what we find. Let's see what we do. Um... And then, yeah, we were just checking away for that. But anyway, game week 218, guys, started off with an absolute bang. As you can see, we've only fi we've finished outside the cards. We've pulled in just about 360 points. In Global All-Star Division 4. Very unlucky not to come away with a card. But we've sailed in with the ETH. That was the primary objective. The thing that's really let me down here, unfortunately, is All Black conceding in the 18th minute to Cyprus. In a dead rubber of a match, it's honestly it was such a stinger. As you'll see, guys, this is a sore one. One point off of a tier three. Now it's a tier three rare, and a lot of you guys, um, a lot of people in general, sorry, hate the tier three rares they pull. But I would much rather any tier three rare than nothing, quite frankly. And to be one point away, oh, it's just so ever so sore. I don't think I've, there's any room for any opt adjustments at this stage. All these guys played over 24 hours ago easily. Um, but yeah, a, a decent enough game week, I suppose. Uh, for them, bringing in the E Fat Canter is objective one for the global All Star team or the All Star Rare team. So we've managed to do that. The All Star Pro, you know, the goalkeeper didn't pay off. You know, Neuer, I think, even got like 
sent home or whatever, maybe with COVID. So I didn't even, that's how detached I am from international football. I didn't even think, oh, Trap might play. But no, Ter Stegen came in, um, which was fun. Because Ter Stegen wasn't in the, you know, wasn't in the squad anyway. Because Ter Stegen's like, if I'm not playing, don't bring me kind of thing. Whereas Trap and uh, Leno, I think is the other one, they'll just go just to be part of the team and <laughs> get stuck in. Um, so we finished on 160 points and it was 250 away from our reward. So you're needing like 400 points to get into the prizes in um, All-Star Rare Pro. So anyone who's picking up prizes this week, fist bumps to you. I uh, hope you get a good prize and a good reward. Under 23 Pro, I got 227 points. Oh man, that's not actually too bad with a DNP goalkeeper. Vlasic in the mech, I just didn't really carry their weight, I suppose, eh? I didn't even realise how close this team was until this very moment. Not that it was close, 150 points, but that scattered over four cards. Um, was that an extra 30 points? Yeah, I suppose when you look at how low the majority of them scored. But it's, you know, anyway. So what would that have needed? 370, 381? So, yeah, I think pretty much my best scoring team, I don't think I was... I'd have... Theo Hernandez got 100, so I could have got a Theo in. Yeah, that was one thing I wanted to check on the stream, actually. This is a great feature on so rare Data. On so rare data where you can just check your players. I know Hybe is a big fan of this. I used to um go through nice little periods of checking this quite often, and then sometimes I forget this feature even exists. But yeah, Tio Hernandez bringing in a 95. I didn't play where. Ouch. But anyway, international week. As long as I'm getting ETH, then do you know what? See in a month from now, it's all I'm gonna remember. <laughs> to be honest with you. So it is what it is. Um but I'm looking forward. I read my lineup builder for the weekend. I'm not going to cover that tonight because it's just it would ruin Thursday. But the weekend looks amazing. Uh, cannot wait for that. It should be good fun. Um, sorry. What are we doing now? Oh yeah, we're picking. I think the main team. I think we have got one team I can put out. Maybe two. Um, I think there's a question over the goalkeepers for me. There's the two teams there. I already kind of picked them, and again, I'm not going to be messing about too much with um lineup builder or anything like that for this game week um i don't have any brazilian cards yet i have picked up an argentinian goalkeeper and i'm thinking especially now oh, there's argentina there does my guy have a game no he doesn't that's just bad luck with the fixtures unfortunately but brazil has a full little slate there so interesting uh world cup qualification europe so netherlands holland and um, pardon me <laughs> netherlands norway um Will be a decent match, I suppose. Uh, France, you know, did France go with the Apex team again to blow away Finland, or what did they do? It's hard to tell. That's why I didn't play Teal because I was like, he hasn't played the last game for uh, AC Milan, red card, not long fit recently, etc. Not really been a France regular period anyway, and unfortunately, being yeah, conservative on that one did not help me at all. Um, Bosnia, Ukraine, there's a fair amount of cards on the platform for both of them. So if Ukraine were to get a spicy result, that could swing it. And I think that group is still wide open um, between the likes of Ukraine and Bosnia. So that's probably like a six-pointer, in fact. Uh, should be blood and guts a game like that. So that should be interesting to watch. Um, even if you're not interested in international football, those dynamics. It might, you know, it might not be a high-scoring game. It might be 1-0, but like, you know, just be a great kind of, you know, old-school, you know, six-pointer. Uh, in Asia, Japan, hopefully they blow it all man away. Australia, China, no idea. Korea, our way to Iraq, cannot be a fun away trip, um, flights wise and whatever. The thing I think about this Asia region, like for the internationals, is it's such a huge landmass. Um, and I always try, yeah, so I've got no real idea how some of these fixtures will go and even how many teams are going to be featured. I think Asmund will be playing for Iran. There's probably there's like actually a few good Iranian players. We could probably kick ass in that game. Um, World Cup qualification. Canada, Mexico will be interesting. I don't know if you're going to be back in one. If you are going to be back in Canada or Mexico, let me know. That'll be interesting. So they've both got some pretty good cards on the platform. Uh, Jamaica, US. Costa Rica, Honduras. Um, Argentina v Brazil. Big game. Don't know if anyone will be back in that. Uh, some, some good Brazil stacks, I suppose. So probably less Argentinian ones because they don't have that many good defenders and stuff, I don't really think. Or am I tripping? Uh, Lisandro Martinez, yeah, so mm, I can't really think. I've just got this image in my head of like the Brazilian stacks, like Casemiro and Neymar, and all that kind of stuff. So, I don't know if it's just a wee bit of recency bias or something going on there. Um, and then the rest of these nations, yeah, there's a bunch of cards for all of them, and picking their teams can be kind of difficult. Like Uruguay, for example, I've not really got much of an idea who they're going to be playing uh, up front, just hard for me. 
Uh, so yeah, that's pretty much what we're looking at. The prize pool, let's have a wee peek at the prize pool. So again, I don't think it's going to be too much unless there's not that many cards. 94 cards uh, in All-Star Rare or All-Star D4. We're getting star rares for the top two wee bits of ETH, wee tiny bits of ETH at the very top. And then again, we're getting top 100 or paying out a card. And how many entrants do we have? 6,000. So yeah, if you get anywhere near a card in All-Star, you're doing well, you know, to be honest, in these international weeks. So... Just get that if just make sure you get that if and in all star pro we're getting star rares all the way back to fourth so double the star rare payout but we're only getting cards back to 21st and it was only 800 entrance so that is a bit more feasible a bit more attainable if you've got a good if you've got a full five complement all star rare pro could be a, a great division to be um fishing in equally we're under 23 pro only 150 entrance there is only eight cards and only two are stars you know so but it could be a great you know if you finish first and you pull it um like a hand or something i wonder what's in the star pool if it, you know you should have a hand or an mbappe still i think yeah mbappe's there i don't know rumor works bellingham i think if you finish first you're going to get any of these top kind of 10 cards i think you'll be quite chuffed um so yeah decent let's check the all-star that's the best case scenario for me really yeah bat messi Kimmy Louie, Neymar, great, love it. Right, so let's have a look. Who have I picked? Right, who have I got? So I think I've tried to, I, I'm, I'm kind of remembering a little bit as I was going through the teams and whatever. I think for my best team, if I backed, I've, hmm, this is what I've done. So I think Ronald Hernandez and Sebastian Legette both play. I think Matt Turner plays. Um, I think Depay plays. Captain Depay is in his contract. You don't need me to tell you that. And uh, Kyogo should play. You know, he's been called international duty. He didn't start the last game. It is a way to a man. Uh, so, you know, bring them into international duty with the travel. You know, surely he starts this game, is what I'm thinking. And <clears throat> I'm just hoping Ronald Hernandez can do like a 40 to 50 score with his super rare multiplier. That will be good. Legit, hopefully, gets a 60 plus. Um, and Depay, we're hoping for 80 plus, really, along with Kyogo if he starts. And then Matt Turner. <laughs> I think, yeah, I think we've got the bones of 400 plus out of this team. If everything goes the way I would hope and expect, should the guys start? Mikey Basson, good to see you. High five. Martin O'Regan, a man. Chrissy Quark. Oscar, good to see you as well, my man. PK, random. Uh, Matt Turner is not expected to start. Yeah, well, I think he will. I don't know. Zach Steph has played the last game. <clears throat> Matt Turner, sorry, guys. I recorded a video earlier today. We'll see you tomorrow. I had this problem where I was talking too long without taking a drink of juice, so I'm just going to stop there and do that. I think Matt Turner plays because um, he's he's playing. He's just, you know, he's playing. He's the best active goalkeeper. Zach Steffen can do that match for you where you need to counter-attack and you need to have precision or much better passing. But um, away to Jamaica, I think, um, yeah, I think you want Matt Turner, to be honest with you. He may play Stefan. I'm happy to go with this. You know, if it does fall on Turner, it falls on Turner. I don't have a goalkeeper anyway. I don't have any other options other than Kosai Tani. As you'll see here, you know, get nobody else kicking the ball. Kim Sung-gyu, who's in our division, of course. But I've got nobody else kicking the ball. So that's, I, think that's my, I think that's my best attempt at All-Star Pro if it was to go well. And then with this team, so what I had in my mind before, I've actually changed this for the better. I'm actually quite happy with this team as well. I think um, I had one team where I'd back Japan and then I just thought, no, nah, better just not mess about and just try and get pick guys that I reckon will start. My biggest question mark is Teal, you know, because he is not long back from injury and whatever, blah, blah, blah. But he yeah, did score so well in the last game that you've got to think, because he's not been in the team that long, big World Cup coming up, They'll want to integrate him. They'll want to get some, you know, some of that good French, you know, chemistry going on the pitch and building relationships and, you know, team patterns, that kind of stuff. Kamada is just the same principle as Kyogo. Didn't start the last game. He's been flown in from Europe for these games. You'd expect him to start. Sorloff will start away to Holland. And without a goal, as you can see in the past, he can hit over 50 without a goal. He's done it twice this year so far. Um, So if he can continue to play like that and... Maybe he gets lucky and gets a goal as well. Then happy days. Uh, I don't think I've got a better alternative to sort off. But I think I do have an alternative. Yeah, I've got Wea. So Wea, I think, is a bit more questionable to start. Because Wes McKinney is out the building. He's went back to Italy, you know. So I don't think Timo Wea has. But there's definitely a minute management on the go with some of these kids. There's no two ways about it. 
if I get anyone else that's used, it's not in training or something. I think that's it. So I'm happy to use Sorloff, I then get to use him for the last fixture. I've got Days of Maida and Asi Raider. Didn't see them actually on the bench, it must be said, so I'm hesitant to use them. Same with Rio Hitate. Um, so that's really where maybe Ugbo comes off the bench, I think, against uh, Mexico. He's not been playing enough to warrant a start, and Canada are in good form and are very well complemented in the front line, so I'm not in a rush to get Ugbo into a team either. So, yeah, I'm happy with that. It'll definitely get me the ETH, I think. Kim Sung Gu, Denier, Kamada, and Sorloff. Surely the four of them are bankers to start. And they can get me the thick end, uh, you know, 220 between them. And then fingers crossed, worst case scenario, Teal comes off the bench. It's kind of my play here. Best case scenario, they all play, they all hit decisives, they all rip it up. And we're doing like 350 pluses like we did this game week. That's pretty much where I'm at. Um, training teams. I think I've only done a few of them. I'm not going to do them with you guys, of course. But yeah, I've tried to reset them a bit. And I've put away... Now, all my MLS guys and stuff like that, you know. So, I thought, with the international break, what I'm going to do is just delete. And I know some of you guys out there have got way more training teams than I do. <laughs> but I just thought, fuck it. I'm just going to delete them all. And I've just put, like, all the MLS guys. So, they're just all away, sitting, chilling out. And then, I think that made up to, like, 10 squads or something like that. And then my next three squads, I thought, right, what's the next kind of thing I can do? To try and keep them undisturbed and segregated. And I managed to make three squads of limited rookies. Which was great fun. Uh, so, not professing that they're going to be amazing or anything like that. Just little daft training teams. But they're cool to look at. And when I look at them, I think... One day... This will be an active lineup somewhere. How cool is that? So, I managed to make three all-rookie teams. I'm just showing you them because why not, you know. Um, they look cool. I think the Dortmund shirt would look cooler in a different lineup because I've got three MLS guys here and just aesthetics. I like that you know the training lineups. You want them to look cool, I think as well. Um, and that means absolutely nothing, but just to me, just when I'm checking in on them or if I need to alter them or stuff, I like to keep like cool looking cards together. Um, and again, just throw these ones together because uh, hey ho, we picked up some cards and whatever. So nice fun, nice all good fun. Uh, fair enough. Actually, I've got new cards today. So on the stream on. I actually did a stream on Friday, didn't we? We did a bonus stream on the Friday because the 15 new Super League clubs came on. The, to the Super Total League Turkish Premier. What do you call it? <laughs> and there was some glaring omissions. Fernabachi, Besiktas, Trabs and Spore and uh, Basa Shakir. So we've, we've got Fernabachi now. There's a brand new club joining tomorrow. A lot of guesses are for Bordeaux and stuff. I think Besiktas, Basa Shakir or uh, what was the other one again? Traps and Sport, it has to be one of them, I think. The the hint was Champagne, which, you know, does lend itself to being Bordeaux, because Bordeaux is kind of associated to, you know, wine and champagne and all that good stuff. But um, I feel like it has to be a Turkish team, really. Uh, the clue, the first little kind of thumbnail thing we got, I don't think there was anything obvious. Oh, guys, lovely. Denier won't play. 23 here, four likes. Guys, hit the like button, says Mikey Basson. Um... Denier won't play, get injured. Thank you very much for the catch, guys. I appreciate it. Right, okay, so I'm in a pickle. We need to drop the old Jason, but thank you very much for catching that, guys. I've got Miles Robinson. He's definitely playing, isn't he? He goes in, no problem at all. Yeah. Miles Robinson, I think, definitely plays. <laughs> don't think they... Or oh, maybe he doesn't, because they, they do kick the teeth out of it and play him a lot. Atlanta do have playoffs coming up. Chris Richards. Did he, start, he didn't start the last game, did he? He did. Yedlin did. I think Kamara Lawrence definitely starts. Do I have any Americans in this team? I don't. I might just pick Lawrence because I think he definitely starts. There's no two ways about it. Robinson. Oh, I think you're right. I think you're right, by the way. Yeah. See, my spidey senses were tingling. Thanks for catching that. Yeah, it was a red card in the last game, wasn't there? Was it Robinson? Yeah, he got a red. Yeah, yeah, you're right. There we go. Apparently, Justin Bilo withdrawn from the Dutch squad with an injury if anyone has him in their team. Miles Robinson suspended. Yeah, double quadruple confirmation on that. Fair enough, guys. Thank you very much. Um, so yes, yeah, so I think Kimar Lawrence is nailed guaranteed. Yedlin, coin toss. Richards, coin toss. Mark McKenzie, coin toss. I think the safe play is, yeah, it's probably going to be Lawrence. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to X this and I'm going to make Teo my defender. Just see who the best player period I can get into this team is rather than just 
the best defender because if I'm going with Teo, then I don't need another defender. That's a good basis of a team. Who have I got the line about? So Weston, no. Denier, no. Brendan Aronson. I think it's probably... Oh, and Tyler. I think Tyler Adams will definitely play. Eunice Moose has got a good shout. So these guys haven't been getting as many minutes. And, uh, you know, Weston and uh, Tyler Adams just got a really favourable situation with his club. That The manager's also American, so he cannot really kick up a fuss. Because he knows how important it is for them to qualify for the World Cup. Um... Musa could be dynamite against Jamaica away. It's a, it's a gamble now, but picking some of these guys. Adams, I would heavily expect to start. So what do I think the midfield will be? I think Legette starts. Sands has been brought in. Weston's out. I think he goes Adams. Does he maybe go Adams, Musa, Legette? Keep the same team, kind of? I think Legit plays. I kind of got a little feeling he plays in a game like this. But sometimes he can play in that kind of Aronson position where he's like a centre mid but he plays wide. Um, Elmt, 20. Thank you very much, buddy. We've caught the red. We've caught the red. We've caught the red card. So, mm, I'm kind of I'm between a few guys. Musa and Adams are exciting for me to play because I get to get them in the uh, SO5 arena which I've not had much of a chance to do. Especially with my Tyler Adams. Um, been a one of Brendan Aronson's got that decisive capability, you know. So if he does play, which I think he might, let me check out the team again because I'd kind of discounted it. It's like I don't need to look at it because um, I'm not needing to pick any of these guys, but now I do. So USA. So against Mexico, we had Robinson off. Yeah. Musa came off. Pulisic. Kellen Acosta. So yeah, Kellen Acosta and Legit. We're going to be surprised they changed all three of them. Maybe played Roldan as well. Or Busio. Pepe Aronson, Wea. Jesus Ferreira. Pulisic. So Pulisic is probably going to get minutes. I think Aronson's probably got a much more favourable situation because of the upcoming winter break. I think Aronson continues to play. He's a bit of a hero in the team. Talisman. Yeah, I'm going with Brendan. I think he plays. And uh, Kamada captain. Because I think if Kamada plays, he's got the potential to hit like 80 against Oman. So yeah, stick him in that. That's good. Thanks for the catch on the denier thing, guys. Love it. So guys, I don't think I've got much else to really go through. Um, if there's anything... Oh, well, we're going to actually look at some players and stuff. So let's have a wee um, mess about with that for a couple of minutes. So, where was it? It was right at the beginning. I'm looking for a decent rear forward and mid. Uh, and that was Addy. So, I'm just going to boom, 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 play page. Let's just go market. New card auctions. New card auctions. Secondary market. Let's go secondary. Static pricing. Definite availability. Uh, rare. So, what are we saying? What's the budget? What's the... What's the region? Don't mind about league, to be honest. Anything else from Addy? I think that was about it. Don't really mind about league, just... Okay, so we're going global, I'm guessing. Right, we're going to... I think the Turkish league is probably... Going to be... Let's put Turkey. Oh, I don't think there's much. Uh, maybe it's down as Super League. Super Total League, yes. Boom. So let's get you guys. And then let's get midfielder. Let's hit favourites. Let's see. Ozo. Don't know if you call that cheap. If you play it. Bertolacci. Hmm. Under point two. It's okay. If you look at, if, you know, if you know what this guy's stats is. Yeah, it'd probably just be Bertolacci. Probably be the main one. I'd be looking at from the secondary market because it's the only one I've got. And up top. Shappy, Shappy, Diego Rossi, Diego Rossi, uh, there's not much going on is there, it's all primary market I suppose with these guys at the moment, um, what other filters could we use, um, bum, 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 bum. what other filters could we use, let's go rare, let's go rare, uh, 
SO5 League. Let's go. I'm going to go Champion Euro, right? I'm going to go a wee bit left field here. Champion Euro. Let's say. Mm -mm -mm, age. Let's go 023. So let's say. Yeah, 24 to 70. So we, we want to make sure we get those 69 year olds in there in case any of them are available uh, at this late hour. Uh, club, national team, that I'm not bored about any of that stuff. And position, like favourites, midfield. Let's see what we get. Best value. I'm just going to go newly enlisted. Or will we go best value? I don't really trust the whole best value metric. Um... But here's a bunch of guys floating about. Now, I would, if you're looking for a decent, rare mid, some of these guys are worthwhile. Um, investigate on prices and whatever, you know, in terms of where they're at and all the rest. So, but these are the sorts of guys. I've got no idea who this kid is. I'm not going to lie. I <laughs> don't know who he is or how he got into my favourites. But there you go. Um, Sabitza. I think Sabitza is going to play a lot more, by the way, after the winter break. Second half of the season. I don't really know who in place of. Mark Rocca is very likely going to leave the club in January a la Donny van de Beek style, you know. It's just not, it's just not ready to, it's just not Bayern. You know, he cannot get into that team, poor guy. But he's good, you know, so he'll probably go somewhere, maybe like Atletico Madrid, he'll go somewhere, like maybe Valencia, Villarreal, he'll probably go to like a top-end La Liga team, is my expectation. And he can take pens. He's a defensive mid, probably can get a fair amount of passes. Isn't going to be a, 60 plus guy on a regular I don't think depending on the calibre of the team he went to maybe but um, so the kind of price maybe a rocket is depending on what your goals are Toma Basic oh Toma Basic is he playing for Sarri now I think if Toma Basic was to break into the Lazio team he's starting to sniff about a little bit you know if there's a start or two here I think I'd decide so for sure um, young Croatian it's okay you know don't get me wrong he's not pulling up trees or anything but if he can play for Sarri, if Sarri buys him, he's a midfielder, a sort of profile he is, then he could be very effective once he integrates, if he gets used to Sarri ball and he can implement it, you know. Um, and again, depending on what your budget is, you know, Rodrigo De Paul might be cheap too, yeah, I don't know. Mikel Marino is looking actually pretty expensive, his form's good, but... Um, and it's... I don't know if that's fluky or not, I don't know, but... His last five looks good, so the price will be up. Kind of hard to tell. Just on an L5, it's just it's just such a snapshot, isn't it? Such a cliche, but it's so accurate, you know? That's exactly what it is. Um, dun, 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 dun. Well, look, Goodig is Mexico. Interesting. Johnny boy, good to see you. Fist bump. Uh, are you sick, Quinny? I've, you know, I've had the sniffles for, like, maybe 10 days or something like that. I am quite well timed for the international game week, but I hope to... It's just, this, it's really just a sniffles. Um, I hope to get rid of it ASAP. <laughs> um, but thanks for noticing, John. Thank you. <laughs> Let's say 700 to a grand. Maybe is that the combined budget? Thinking maybe a Zion Fleming. Zion Fleming would come up on this if I changed the parameters or whatever because he is in my favourites, Addy. So I don't know what his form's like this season. I favoured him from my initial scouting of the Eredivisie when it onboarded back in January, whatever it may have been. But yeah, he's a name I know, the guy I like. Um, but yeah, John, cheers. Addy, let's keep going. Zion Fleming, I think, is a forward as well. I think he plays number 10. Uh, but I think he is listed as a forward. Healthy Eve Balance Quinny, who's on the shopping list. I don't really know, buddy. I do not really know. Um, high five. Let's go, Brandon. Brandon. Brandon Aronson. <laughs> Did I call him Brandon? <laughs> Uh, and D and Gostepe might be a good shout for a lower tier striker for a threshold team. Moldy, good to see my man. Uh, Oscar, I don't know that guy. Or maybe D Gostepe. I don't think Gostepe came up in any of my Super League stuff. So, John or anyone else out there, if you did miss my streams last week, I did one. So I know it's John, you've got a little badge. If you're a member, there's a members only Y Scout stream where we go into the Turkish League. And even if you don't, I did a superficial Turkish League thing as well. Both of them dropped on Friday. Both of them were live. So if you're bored, can't sleep at night or whatever, you're on a drive, John. Maybe you're going driving. You need something to you know, tide you over. Um, then go for that. 25 years old. His form is... <laughs> wow. Yeah, the L5 Oscar um, 
paints the exact picture that you have painted. So <laughs> just a threshold shout, you know, between 40 to 48 per game week. Yeah, seems to be on his last five anyway. The, the real question is, how much does he go for? We're going to hit rare and then we're going to sort by lowest price. So there's only two. <laughs> so um, it is a buyer's market versus seller's market, I suppose, is probably the term. But yeah, be somebody for sure. Why not? Um, so we're going to look at striker as well. So 700 to, I don't know if that's between both the positions I date or if it's for one of them. So the one I got on my DMs was from, um, I'm sorry, but I've got like contact of sorts with three accounts that have Moz, like Moz, Moz or Mozzie. Mo, you know, there's a few Mozzie. So one of the Mozzies, can't remember at this point in time, I've not got my phone in front of me. Which one it was, but one of them was asking me um, for a rare defender. I think it was like below 0.3 or something like that. And it's like, yeah, that sounds fun. I'll definitely have a go at that. So 0.3 the now, I think it must be about like, what, 800 quid or something like that. Uh, there's 700. Let's see what that brings up. Okay, and then let's go highest price just so I can see what we're playing with here. Highest price gets us to point two. Let's go a wee bit higher. Let's see, eight fifty. What does that get us to? Oh Jesus, point three. What are we talking about? A bag of sand. A bag of sand for point three. What a time to be alive. What a time to be alive. A bag of sand. What does that get us to? Point three. Wow. There we go. Okay, so for a decent defender, and I'm just going to hit favourites. And we'll just see what's here. Now, I'm not going to do it by highest price, but I know that that's the limit. Okay. Let's go by newly listed. Somebody's getting Etikura listed for point 0.3 there. Fucking bold, aren't they? Yeah. Good defender is good fun. Yeah. Now, I actually rate Hugo Guillemon much higher than what his SO5 would actually. He's got two decent scores recently. Hugo Guillemon. Mentioned him a few times already, but. You know, he's decent. Somebody to sleep on. I don't know what... SO5, I don't really think it's his game, but unfortunately, you know, it doesn't feel that way so far. Things can change. You never know. Um, but Rasmussen. Johnny Boy will tell us. The guy is a killer in Manila when he's on it. And he's got good format at the moment, for sure. Maybe not his best, but, you know, that's um, definitely... We're getting utility out of those scores. No two ways about it. Pavlovich. Now, do you know, I was actually really interested in buying Pavlovich when he was at Cesaro Bruges. I didn't really believe he was going to get minutes and you know he has kind of this you know he got a lot of minutes early season he's kind of lost a few um over the last couple of games but <clears throat> young guy is impressive he's good if you watch him uh let's see nobody else is jumping i think miazka is, is probably a fair price he's uh pretty solid got into like defender of the month or something uh, defender of the week or something it's just a big like clearance Head the ball, clearances, clearances, last ditch tackles kind of guy, you know, some of those defenders can hit big. Um, you can get good passing as well with the other team standing off them a bit. Arana, that could be a great shout by the way, because this guy is like a top tier player. I'm pretty sure this is who Hendo won, is like a star rare in, in a region or something, or a top end tier one. And he stuck him in like D2 and he helped him out big time. I'm pretty sure that's, his, that's the guy anyway, and that's the circumstances, he's got big scores in him. He's 23, he's not exactly old. Um, and then the company he's keeping here, Mickey Yamane, is going to go out of season. Wouldn't recommend that time wise. Um, I'm not too sure where the Brazil season is at this exact moment in time. On his way over. Denzel apparently is in a team, according to my man John. He's the one who puts that voice in my head. Uh, do, 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 do. four hour drive tomorrow if you'll be sleeping uh, you'll be listening to me <laughs> when the progress bar says PK random who knows man who knows you know see the see the thing about the progress bar right see my god's honest see my actual kind of opinion on it or not my opinion but my kind of gut um, it's like they, they had those plans to do all that stuff and then I think something's happened and they've thought right we need to get limiteds out now maybe a change of strategy it might have been some sort of new thing but i think the limited introduction got slightly accelerated ahead of maybe their plan a for lack of a better term and in their plan a they weren't happening as quickly as we've got them 
and the progress bar was like some sort of stepping ground because that was the feeling that if you go like and listen to old content like me, John, Andrews, any, everyone and anyone that you can't think about, we all kind of said that like, oh yeah, but the progress bar, but as the platform grows, the need for the new scarcity will become even more crucial. You know, that was kind of the chat. And then progress bar is still on ice, new scarcity comes out. So I don't think, I don't think their initial drawing of what they said it was going to look like, feel like, and do was maybe even necessarily even on the table anymore. I might have a different makeup, agenda, facility for the game, that kind of thing. Uh, that being said, by the way, guys, it's it's just it's such a difficult thing to to forecast and predict. You know, I was going to say something else there, but it's just that's yeah, that's what I'm at on it. Um, to be honest with you. Not she fourth evening Quinny. Um, uh, Mr. Star, I hope you're good. And uh, thank you, Josh. I hope you're good as well, my man. Uh, Dave L. Obina Nobodo looks good. Check him out in a second. Um, is there anyone else here from a man who's after defender Rasmus Christian? It's just that winter break you've got to contend with, I suppose. Um, that's Pavlovich and his Monaco kit. Does not look happy to be in Monaco, does he? Um, oh, wrong screen. <laughs> there he is. Uh, Barabal Joe Narajo is going out of season. I'm a big fan of him for sure. Um, now that's Andres Andrade, right? I've got no idea when I favoured this guy, but I definitely favoured him because he's plays for Panama and he's in the Bundesliga. I've got no idea when I came across him or why or anything, um, but. He could be a wee sneaky one. They're not going to qualify for World Cups or anything like that. But you might get some international joy out of them if it's like because teams like Panama when they play like El Salvador, those games are like nil nils and one eaches and stuff, and it is just like twelve yellow cards a game and forty corners and all that kind of stuff. Philip Max could be a killer. Is he playing? He is. He's just not absolutely killing, is he? He's just doing well. Twenty seven. Still got plenty of it in the tank. I don't think anyone's jumping out to me here as like a massive, oh yeah, that would be the best candidate as a recommendation in that price banding, you know, for a defender. A lot of these guys are like, yeah, there's some good stuff going on. For the amount he's under budget, Burger Melling is a decent guy, I suppose. You know, he can do it. He can do it. You know, he's solid. He's just, he's not under 23. He's, you know, he's, there's just not that much sparkle about a guy like that, you know, and they get easily overlooked. Uh, same with Ewood play the check by the way. Uh, Belgium under twenty one international, a very early card that I got and unfortunately was injured for a long period of time. And he's back in the team, he's back doing well enough, you know, he's back in the Belgium under twenty one team. He does all, if you look at all of his pictures, I think he looks goofy in every one of them. <laughs> That's no no disrespect he would if you're out there. But um he does look goofy in all of his pictures, I think. <laughs> oh Jesus. Frimpong, by the way, is U23. And it's one of those fullbacks that can hit big. Is a number one at the team. Is a team on the up doing a lot of good stuff on a lot of different fronts. And might be eventually, who knows, be pushing for the Dutch um, job. Who knows? Get right back. Owen Weindal is right at the top of this budget, it feels like, at point three. Uh, Yaimar going out of season. Pedro Porro, point two. That would be it. I know a lot of people don't rate fullbacks. Pedro Porro, Christian Gunter, great ones. Um, Amiri and Leverkusen looks to be interesting. Well, yeah, I do like Amiri. I used to have super rare Amiri. Loved the guy last season, great ability. Just don't really know what this coach thinks of him. He doesn't really seem to be able to nail a place down. Um, but Amiri, when he's on it, man, Amiri's, Amiri's so silky to watch. Like, Amiri is like, um, he's kind of like a quick Gundogan, you know, like he's... Dead nippy about the box, can put a harsh tackle in, and um, but something. But it was weird because last season he was kind of getting played out wideish, kind of like the Wurtz role. See what Wurtz is kind of doing. He kind of got a wee bit of that, um, and he's just not really been. He had a really great little purple patch last year, and that was kind of it up to this point. Um, but let's check out Obina Nobodo. That's N W O. Bodo. E O. Oh, have a check of this kid. Hey, Goz Tepe also. Maybe we've got some Goz Tepe fans in the house. Welcome. I need to learn Turkish for welcome. That's on my to-do list now. There's only one rare. I wonder if it's yours. <laughs> That's why you're saying it. But hey, looks okay. I suppose 24. Midfielder. 
scores are tasty enough. Definitely worth further investigation, I would say. Um, Ujpest, which is the Hungary, um, Hungary team, if you're not aware. 182 appearances, 172 were starts, 20 goals. Yeah, something there, I suppose, for sure. I like that. Uh, so we were so it was a striker, uh, Andy, for that kind of budget. So we're working at the top of it there. Let's go back to this and we'll drop in some forwards. We'll have a peek and see what we get. It's funny how the top of the chart is three million. <laughs> like you're going to be searching for a card that's three million quid. It's like, oh, I don't want to spend any less than three million pounds. <laughs> oh my god. I think, yeah, that's about the... mm. Let's get it back to. Yeah, okay, that's about as close as I can get it. Forward faves. I'll stick to best value on this one, okay, since it's a striker. Uh, we don't want Champion America, guys, so sub -alive. Let's check. Um, I'm just going to do this. Go fashion. Let's do Champion Europe. See what the Europeans get. Battle cow! <laughs> Probably not the best recommendation. Ibra, player! By the way, Alison, player! Could be a great shout. It's very much a purple patchy player, right? He's not had much form yet this year, but it feels like the form is coming. 96 two games ago, 53 in the last match, and uh, him and Marcus Turam. And the Mooch and Gladbach machine, once they get up and running, they can play amazing football. They can be great fun to watch. And they, they can get decisive actions, you know. If you've heard of Alassane Playa before, it's probably because he, he normally gets tons of FIFA and form cards. Because he scores goals, you know. He scores good goals as well. Um, So he could be somebody for sure. He's not even that old. He's 28 or something, yeah. Sorloff, I'm biased, but I think he's got something to give. Um, I think because... I watched him for Sociedad and honestly like he was it felt like he was playing like big time like he was motivated to like prove and all that kind of stuff so I liked what I seen there if you're after bang for buck I think Jekyll is going to be right up there with best value for money uh, out there there's a few interesting guys like Robert Scott for example I wonder how his scores are doing he's been playing left back again yeah his scores haven't been too good I think he's been playing well but but this is a forward but unfortunate for our yield Robert um, Wissam Ben Yedder It's actually pretty cheap Is he so He's not injured or anything is he Yeah he's just not in form really Ben Yedder I'm a big fan of Big big fan of Loved him in Sevilla Just not been that great at Monaco is he But big fan of Ben Yedder ba -ba 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 -ba. So we started with best value Which was Falco <laughs> We'll see where we end um, Bladu, I think Bladu's starting to get starts by the way and um, I was really disappointed I never got this guy last year This at this moment in time it doesn't feel like such a bad thing of course because he's just not been playing or whatever but I'm still open to the possibility some of those guys like I think to myself like oh I would have bought him um, if I had the money I wish I got him you know at the time I'm thinking I would have got this I would have got that but then when things don't go their way and their price goes backwards what would you have done if you did get them? Would you be holding them or selling them? And most of the time, I would just be riding the waves and going with it. So when that comes back around, I think, oh, well, maybe I've got a good entry point here that I wouldn't have had had I bought at point one, you know. Um, Matthias Cunha. Oh, one of my favourite players over the last like, three or four years for just showing glimpses for two months and then not playing for ages. And, you know, for one reason or another, you know, he transfers, it falls out, it gets injured or whatever. And he's only 22 still. So wildly talented guy. And, you know, hopefully coming to a town near you soon. Hopefully he gets playing some fucking football. Um, Cormier de la Fuente, Chichuna, Fabio Silva, Daniel Maldini. You can probably see a theme with some of my favourites on forwards. I like uh, I like people with stories. Like Jovic, by the way, you know. Like, I don't really know what's happening with him. Surely he gets kicked out of Madrid at some point, eh? Shevchenko! Sorry. <laughs> Mr. Dembele? He's injured, I think, isn't he? Yeah? Is this the cheapest one going? 
If Dembele fit is going to score goals, was scoring goals, and will score goals again at Leon. Um, no, not highest price. Lowest price. Why is that a feature? I don't why is he the highest price. Uh, yeah, the lowest is 0 0.3 there now. Was going a good bit more when he was starting and he was hit, fit and healthy. His auctions were going for quite a pretty penny, if memory serves me right. So, maybe Dembele, if you're patient, or you know he's coming back soon, or whatever. Further research to be done, of course. Um, but yeah. Hoz Glenn Dennis. I'm going to check that name out, Mikey. Not far from finishing, guys. I think I'm kind of running out of steam here, but I don't mind looking at players and chatting a bit with these. Uh, Hoz. Hoz Gale. Dennis. Did you just make that up? <laughs> oh, I spelled it wrong. H O S. G-E-L. I can just copy and paste, can't I? Where is it? No, it's not that. Let me try this. Copy. Paste. No, there's no big enough. up. I think you've made that up. <laughs> Dembele linked for Newcastle today. He will drive there himself to make a deal of like that happen. Uh, Dembele is a mercenary. <laughs> he will do that. Even if injured. He done it last year with Atletico. He was injured. He's like, Get me that one. Went on one athletic, played like three games or something from the bench, wasn't fit. He'll do it again. You know, he's got it in him. Don't take it per I don't take it personally when it was when it was at Celtic with a guy like Dembele because he's like that everywhere than fair play, you know. Um Oh Hosgil Dennis. Hosgil Dennis is Turkish for welcome. Love it, Mikey. Cheers, my man. Sort me out. Translations on the go. Matthew Hoppe is a cheap buy, injured, but has real potential. Yeah, so I agree with that also. It depends what your patience is with some of these guys and what your expected turnaround is. So it's hard to say this is the guy to get. I just That's why I'll just stick on my favourites. To the criteria you've got, we'll just see what comes up. <laughs> why not? Um, I think that's us, guys. I hope you've enjoyed the stream tonight. So we will be back on Thursday. We're we'll going through SD Leagues. We'll be going through the SO5. All the good stuff, guys. Hopefully we pick up a card in the next game week. As long as we get the Eve, that's all we're really worried about at the end of the day. Um, and, da, 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 and honestly, guys, I'm going to have... I'm going to have the most amount of teams I've had out in a long time that I'm really excited about. Like, I've already kind of looked at... As long as nothing changes, I hope I'm not jinxing myself. But it should be one of those weekends where it's like, yes, everything's in action. I can do this here. I can do that there. And we can really roll it out. Um, so please join me for Thursday. I hope you enjoy it. If you've watched the stream live, you are an absolute hero. Thank you very much. You've got no idea. If you've watched this after we've been live, I love you as well. Thank you very much for joining us. As always, guys, if you've laughed, you learned, you like something, whatever, then please do. Just take a seat in my barnet. Uh, drop a like on the video. Subscribe to the channel if you've watched a few of these videos already and you haven't already. And stay out of trouble, guys. And I will catch you on the next one. Good night. Take care. Bye-bye.